Hello everyone, and welcome back to my series where I talk about how to love the signs. Um, today we are looking at Gemini, and honestly, I don't think I need to be telling anyone how to like Geminis. <laughs> um, they are magnetic. They are one of the most charismatic signs. It is a tale as old as time falling for the Geminis too hard and too fast. But once again, this series isn't really about how to um, love the signs in the meaning of like how to serve them. This series is about how to appreciate the signs, what we see in them that inspires us and how they bring light into the world. And even though it's very, very easy to light There are some people who have some pretty strong anti-Gemini sentiments, especially online. It's kind of a meme. Um, I remember there was a couple TikToks a while back, and maybe this is just me and my algorithm. You never know with TikTok. But it was like, um, Gemini rehab centers and stuff like that. Geminis get a lot of those jokes. Um, and I think a lot of that is because Gemini are the twins. Um, Gemini are sometimes accused of being inauthentic, um, and a little bit wild, and overpowering, especially, uh, like, vocally. They can kind of dominate a conversation. Um, but today we're going to talk about how all of those things are just manifestations of different, they're different manifestations of a really, really beautiful, beautiful Gemini spirit. So, Gemini is a mutable air sign. So, with air, usually what we're thinking of is intellect and freedom and movement. And with mutability, we're looking at adaptability and movement again, and Gemini is also ruled by Mercury, so with Mercury we're thinking of um, communication and speed and commerce. Um, Hermes uh, and Mercury share a lot of similar energy as well. Mercury is the, you know, romanization of the Greek Hermes, so they share a lot of similar archetypal aspects. Um, so because of all of those forces kind of making up what Gemini is, Gemini, Gemini's mind is vast. One of the kind of greatest examples of a Gemini that people often throw out is Walt Whitman, and one of Walt Whitman's favorite quote, or not favorite, famous, most famous quotes is, do I contradict myself? So I contradict myself. I am vast. I contain multitudes. And that is big, big Gemini energy right there. Gemini, whenever they speak, sometimes they're accused of being unprincipled because they contradict themselves. Sometimes they're accused of being inauthentic. But in order to fully appreciate a Gemini whenever they're speaking, I think it's really important to hear almost 90% of what they're saying as a sort of hypothetical or a thought experiment. Geminis are so curious and so interested in everything um, that they want to explore things, and they, and they usually want to explore ideas by communicating them, not just soaking on them in their own heads. They're communicators because of that Mercury energy. And they're some of the best communicators a lot of the time. A very mature, very evolved. We have some fireworks going on. Sorry about that. A very mature, very evolved Gemini um, often has a great gift with language. Usually, Gemini sun signs are pretty holistically gifted with um, communication. 
I've noticed a lot of Gemini moons um, have, they might not necessarily be completely gifted with language or communication, but they often have like a really specific language skill in their back pocket. Um, something like knowing a lot of languages or being able to, um, being able to rap off the cuff, like freestyle rap really well, or, um, being able to, like, they'll have, like, an incredible typing speed. <laughs> like, they'll just have one random, like, crazy good communication skill. Whereas Gemini Suns are just charming. A lot of them are natural leaders, but they're likable. They're so freaking likable because they just know how to not just play a room, but play individuals. They know they have a great instinct for communication. For communication, communication. But because they're so good at communicating and so charming, Sometimes it can be freaky when you, you know, talk to a Gemini for a long time and then you leave the conversation and you feel great because you were just talking to a Gemini. <laughs> um, but then you actually try and remember what they said and it's like, maybe they said something really disturbing or maybe they were just saying words that didn't make sense at all. And so that's kind of where that accusation of inauthenticity comes from or, um, the accusation of them just talking for talking's sake and saying nothing real of value. But again, it's because for Geminis, a lot of what they're saying is hypotheticals and they're exploring things and they're, ex they're going places that other people wouldn't have the courage to go. For example, I'm a Virgo. Virgo's also ruled by Mercury. Virgo's another communicator in the Zodiac. But as we go around the astrological wheel, starting with Aries and ending with Pisces. The, um, the self becomes less and less primary to the signs as they go on, and they become more and more wrapped up in the emotions and feelings and experiences of others. Aries is, um, and I talked about this in the Aries video, incredibly consistent. They have a, a very solid ego, whereas Pisces, their identity is so wrapped up in the <laughs> identities of everyone around them. For a Pisces, it can be even, you know, hard to discern what's their emotions and what's the emotions of other people. What are they projecting? What are they perceiving? Uh, what is themselves? What is their dreams? What are their dreams? All of those lines get really blurred for Pisces. Gemini, um, in that path from the self, a very strong self, to more of an outward-looking eye, um, Gemini has just started taking notice of the other people in the room and other ideas. So Aries has just discovered the self. Gemini has just discovered its environment, and Taurus is kind of in between the two of those. Um, but Gemini is incredibly interested in ideas and environments and people and wants to know everything and explore everything. But Gemini is not emotionally invested. Virgo, again, another communicator ruled by Mercury, is much more invested in the emotions of others, which is why Virgo is often a mediator, because they communicate, and they can mediate conversations, and they can be sensitive to everyone in a room. Geminis are not sensitive. They can ask probing questions, they can make provocative statements, um, all kind of in the service of exploring an idea, 
which again can get them into some situations that make non-Geminis uncomfortable, like why would you talk about that? Why would you bring that up? Why would you go there? <laughs> but Geminis want to go there. Geminis want to explore those things, which is exciting. And I think in order to appreciate a Gemini, yeah, you just always have to remember that they are likely speaking in hypotheticals. They're not actually talking about what their heart believes, their principles. They're just exploring something. They're exploring something. Another thing that I've noticed about Geminis, and I have three prominent Geminis in my life. Um, for the other signs that I've done so far, I've had more people who I can kind of look at and find similarities between them. For Gemini, my pool is pretty small, but I do know these people pretty well, these three, and they're very, very different, but one thing that's in common with all of them is that they are very key members to their community. They are the kind of people, one of them I know through Discord, and they're the kind of person where if they join a VC, then like, Three minutes later, like a whole bunch more people have joined because they saw that person in VC and they're like all excited to go. Another one of these people is um, a teacher and they're the kind of teacher that the students absolutely idolize and even the students who aren't in that person's class, they uh, like can't wait until they take that person's class and until they learn from them and it's less about, you know, learning the subject matter about just like people want to be in that person's presence. People are constantly celebrating Geminis, constantly kind of idolizing Geminis. Um, and there's a lot of signs that can kind of be the life of a party or the life of a room, but unlike those other signs, maybe Leo's Sagittarius comes to mind. Gemini is very humble. And it doesn't usually, um, either doesn't, like, legitimately doesn't realize how important they are, or if they're a little bit more aware, then they might realize it, but they don't want to invoke it. They would never say it. They would never admit it. Um, they're, they're quite humble. And along with that humility comes, uh, One of Gemini's hmm, secret principles, and I haven't seen this um, really talked about anywhere. This is just something I've observed. But all of every Gemini that I've met and become close with has been very, very interested in the ritual of things, and. Keeping community rituals happening while also not talking directly about them. Which is weird, right? A Gemini not talking about something. But I think when it comes to the sort of sacred elements of community, Gemini usually has a really, really big appreciation for keeping mystery sort of like mystique of certain rituals intact. So Geminis will make little rituals for their community happen, um, but Gemini doesn't want to explain why it is a good thing that they are doing that. And I know that's really vague, but um, I feel like if you understand what I'm saying, then you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I hope that you understand what I'm saying. Um, let me think of an example. Okay, a Gemini would probably really, a Gemini who's involved in a community, it would be a very Gemini thing of them to try and get everyone to sing a song together, and maybe even jokingly they would start holding hands with the people and like trying to get people to do something together. But um, if asked why, I think that that Gemini would be very hesitant to admit I am trying to create a community bonding event 
because singing collectively is biologically proven to blah 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 because that ruins the mystique, you know? I think Gemini is much more likely to uh, just say, it's fun and I like to do this. Even if on some level they know that they are orchestrating um, a sort of community ritual, they tend to keep those mysteries alive as best they can, um, even though they often are invested and create rituals. So, I guess, sort of to wrap this up, um, and to get at really the core of what makes Gemini so beautiful, going back to how they're an air sign, Um, and I guess kind of touching back on their accusations of inauthenticity. Gemini's need the freedom to be inconsistent, and that is part of their beauty. They are transformative, and along with constantly being on a transformative journey themselves, they can transform other people. Geminis can transform other people, and that is um, such a gift that they have. And I think it's another reason that they're so magnetic. When you're involved with a Gemini, um, I think you can feel your own self become a little bit more open to change. Unless you're a kind of person who really, really works hard to guard against that, which you might be. But in order to love a Gemini, I think it's important not to fall in love with their outer performance, with their sense of style, with their aesthetic, with their ideas, or whichever um, whichever hobbies they, they currently have, whatever space they currently occupy, because all of those sort of identity bits are things that change for Geminis. What you need to love about Geminis is their ability to transform. With Geminis, we love their expansiveness and their adaptiveness and how they can make a mountain, a beautiful mountain, out of any molehill they come across. Um, not in the sense of creating problems, but in the sense of just creating magnitude, um, rather than keeping things simple. Um, another good way to contrast them with other communicators, specifically to contrast them with Virgo, because they both share a lot, they're both mutable, they're both um, ruled by Mercury, but Virgo tends to bring things back down to Earth, can be very practical. Gemini is not interested in practicality, their ideas want to rise up, their ideas want to expand into the air. They want to soar far and wide spaces with their ideas and their thoughts and the things that they're communicating. And whenever you love a Gemini, you just love the journey they take you on. You love the journey that they're going on. And it's all about the journey. It's always about the journey. Because with the Geminis, I don't even think there really is a destination. It's just a constant, beautiful, beautiful flight. And, um, yeah, I think that's it. I feel like I kind of talked a little bit fast. I also didn't pull out the tarot. I kind of forgot. I'm kind of tired today, and I also, now I keep saying kind of, <laughs> but anyway. Um, in the tarot, they are the lovers really gets at the communication aspect of Gemini, that 
there is a duality and a fluidity and um, duality, fluidity, and that it's like a two-in-one situation constantly. It's like a two-in-one situation where there's just always more than what meets the eye. There's always more than what meets the eye. And there's a love of communication rather than a love of what's being communicated. Um, and I think the idea of the lovers kind of gets at that as well. It's not about falling in love with X, Y, or Z. It's just falling in love, flying. Yes, the Gemini is always in flight, always in flight, like Hermes. All the way back around to Hermes. I hope you Geminis enjoyed this, and I hope you friends of Geminis enjoyed this too. I'm really curious about what y'all have to say in the comments. Um, if you have any more insights about Geminis that I skipped over, uh, because I am a little bit tired today. <laughs> um, but I think I said all my ideas. I uh, I hope y'all have a good night, and I will see you guys next time in this series. Next is Cancer. 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 Ooh. That's gonna be a juicy one. <laughs> and Pisces. I have a lot of experiences with Cancers and Pisces. And Aries. Cancer, Pisces, Aries. Those are the signs that appear most in my life, I think. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the comments, and um, feel free to give input on both Geminis and ideas for Cancers.